Time to be impressed again. Why? Because Kling just unlocked the start and end frame feature for model 2.1. And of course, I didn't waste any time. I ran a bunch of tests right away. Let me say this up front. Have you tried generating 10 second videos lately? Feels like things have gotten way more stable. The video you're watching right now, it's built entirely from 10 second clips. And yeah, pretty impressive. Though one big challenge still remains. More on that in a bit. Like always on this channel, I brought in a second AI video platform and ran the exact same test as I did with Kling. And yes, you've probably guessed it. This time, the competitor is Midjourney Video. They've just recently rolled out their own starting and ending frame feature. Now, when you run side-by-side -side tests like this, you always run into a few odd surprises. The videos I'm showing you in this tutorial were created under identical conditions on both platforms. I tried different styles, different levels of complexity, just to see what happens. As usual, we're using the familiar four grid layout. Top left for mid-journey video, top right for cling, and the start and end frames at the bottom. Take a look and judge for yourself. Which platform delivers the better result? Example one, a cowboy, a pickup truck, somewhere out in the vastness of America, wild and untamed. The prompt was, the cowboy looks into the distance. Then he turns his head. The camera pans to the right and reveals a pickup truck in front of the mountains. In Kling, the transition between frames flickers quite a bit. Mid-journey feels a bit smoother here. Example 2. Beach, ocean, bright colours. A woman shows us her seaside restaurant. Soft waves roll across the sand. The prompt. The woman looks to her right, then starts walking. The camera follows her as she approaches a colourful beach house by the ocean. The higher resolution in Kling gives it a slight edge. Midjourney's version feels a bit clunky. Example 3. For fans of 3D or adventure games, this one's a treat. A real world emerges from a construction sketch, complete with an open castle gate that basically says, press start. The prompt this time was super simple. Camera orbits around. Midjourney nails it with a visually rich interpretation. Kling stays pretty static. Example 4. A close-up of an Aztec priest, not someone you'd want to meet in a dark alley. Glowing red eyes. The prompt. The priest walks outside. The camera rotates slowly around him. It reveals the temple and the crowd below. Both versions are well executed. But Kling adds some really nice detail especially the earrings and the feathered crown. Example 5. We stay in the Aztec world, and now we find out why the priest stepped outside. A massive alien warship enters the planet's atmosphere, emerging from the clouds. Prompt. The man looks to his right and notices a massive alien warship emerging from the clouds. The camera slowly turns to reveal the ancient temple city. Example 6. A king, a donkey, and a yellow bucket. Still very much in the medieval mood, they're deep in conversation. Prompt, the king looks at the donkey and talks to him. Then he strokes the donkey's head. The camera slowly pans from the king to the donkey. Both versions capture the moment nicely. Kling's result feels a bit more believable overall. Example 7. Defining your start and end frame isn't always as easy as it sounds. Here's what became clear in this one. If you want the final zoom to land on a specific part of the scene, like the ship, then that part needs to be in the actual end frame. The prompt? Super short. The camera orbits around and pushes in. Midjourney had a hard time maintaining image quality throughout the sequence. Example 8. A Viking turns into a superhero, or maybe the other way around. In this one, Kling really benefited from a small tweak in the prompt. Just by adding shocked with open eyes, the result went from good to great. Midjourney's version also has its charm, but Kling's output looks like something straight out of a superhero movie. The last test is all about evolution. It's made up of three connected scenes. A monkey turns into a hiker, and the hiker turns into a robot. It was fascinating to see how both platforms handled that. I tried all kinds of prompts here, from super short to ridiculously long. 
Mid-Journey shows more literal motion. Kling feels a bit more static in comparison. And believe it or not, when it came to the transformation from hiker to robot, the best result actually came from the prompt. Yes, sometimes it's better to stop overthinking it and just let the AI do its thing. So, were all of them perfect? Nope. But you can clearly see where things are headed, and that alone makes it exciting to keep exploring, especially once you lock in a visual style you can stick with. Pretty impressive stuff. So how does the start and end frame feature work in Kling? First, open the platform. Go to klingai.com and click Create in the top right. If you're already logged in, you'll land right on your dashboard. You can also sign in using a Google account. And right up top, you'll see the function we're here for. Start and end frames, now available. Next, click Video in the left-hand menu. That takes you into the Video AI tool. Now make sure you've selected the right model, Kling 2.1, up in the top left. This feature currently only works with the standard 2.1 version. Below that, select Image to Video, and then Frames. At this point, you'll already see the two buttons we care about, Start and End. The currently active field is the one with the white outline, so here's the process. First, I upload a start image, then I click End, and upload the image that represents the final point of the scene. Now, a quick but important tip. Make sure your start and end images aren't too similar. Otherwise, Kling will just dissolve them together like a basic PowerPoint fade. But also, don't go too far in the other direction. Let's say you start with a mountain climber on Mount Everest and end with the same guy deep sea diving in the Mariana Trench. Kling won't know what to do with that. Remember, you're working with 5 or 10 seconds. You can't cover the whole world in that time. What worked best for me was using two photos that feel plausibly connected. For example, a close-up of a general as the start frame, and then a wide shot of his army as the end frame. Or a gladiator, start frame, followed by an aerial view of the Colosseum, end frame. Also important, the colour tone of both images should be as similar as possible. That's what makes the transitions feel believable. Now you paste in your prompt, pay attention to sequence and detail. I've made a separate video on that, link in the description. If the prompt doesn't work right away, tweak it. You'll immediately see how it affects the result. You can also use DeepSeek for assistance. But that doesn't automatically give you the perfect prompt either. Below that, you'll find the field for negative prompts. Honestly. This feature promises more than it delivers. Don't rely on Kling to filter things out just because you list them here. At the very bottom, you can switch between 5 or 10 seconds. And just like in Midjourney, you can choose to generate four outputs at once. That increases your credit cost. So decide if it's worth it for you. Click Generate to start the video creation process. Once it's done, your results will appear on the right. So what's my verdict? Kling's start and end frame feature is actually pretty solid, especially considering this isn't even the top tier model in the 2.1 lineup, and it delivers straight at 1920 by 1076 resolution. Is everything perfect? No, there are still a few rough edges, but first let's talk about pricing. The standard 2.1 model costs, quote unquote, only 35 credits per run which means you don't constantly feel like you're burning through your balance on unusable outputs. And yes, there are still some of those. But thanks to that lower cost, I was able to run a whole series of tests and compare 5 second and 10 second clips directly. And something became clear. The more you ask the AI to transform between the start and end frame, the more fragile the results become. With 10 seconds, Kling has more breathing room to handle complex transitions but that also increases the amount of guesswork. Wherever Kling lacks visual information, it has to improvise. And that's where things get tricky. Flickering, jumping, instability. Sometimes it just falls apart visually. Hopefully things will improve once this feature is available in the 2.1 master model as well. For now, some of the videos still feel like experimental work in progress. One thing that does work well prompt refinement. Sometimes a tiny adjustment, like adding and turns around to 
the person steps forward, is all it takes to fix weird anatomy or broken motion. Also really helpful, the inspiration and presets section. It's a great way to reset when a prompt completely derails or just gets too long. Kling also adds sound to its videos. At the time of this recording, that feature is still free. But honestly, most of it is background filler. It's not something I would ever use. Sound design isn't just a layer you slap on top. It needs intent, a concept that matches the visuals. And when Kling adds mouse squeaks and grunting noises to a spaceship launch, well, it's good for a laugh, but that's about it. Kling handles a wide range of styles, from photorealistic to illustrative. But the more abstract the input, the more unpredictable the results. So, is it better than mid-journey video with its own start and end frame? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. You've seen the comparisons. Even with the HD update, mid-journey video still lags behind in resolution. And higher resolution usually means better details and more believable ones. That's a plus for Kling. One thing that's still a bit frustrating, the interface. Controls are scattered across the screen, left, right, bottom, even nested inside panels. Icons, buttons and text all mixed together. It's not the most intuitive design, but once you get used to it, it works, especially if you're an experienced user. My recommendation? Use a mix of platforms. One 2.2, Seadance Pro, Runway, especially Act 2, Midjourney Video, Hiluo, VO3, or whatever fits your workflow. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AR, now you know.